I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And going into the house of the Lord is not a place, it's a, it's a position that you're in spiritually when you can get into God and God can get into you. Amen, somebody. Good evening, and welcome to our second night of our fall revival at First New Hope Baptist Church. I'm Reverend Stevenson Reed, the pastor of First New Hope, and I am so excited. I pray that you got a blessed word last night from Dr. Oliver, and tonight you're gonna to be getting another dynamic speaker who is with us tonight, uh, Dr. Finch. And I just wanna share with you uh, as we go into the word of God and going to it, that it just gets better and better because God has a plan for our lives. Let's, let's hear again our call to worship from the book of Romans, the first chapter. I want to come with the 16th through the 17th verse to you. And let's hear what thus said the Lord before I have a prayer of invocation, and then I will introduce our guest speaker. The word of God for the people of God, King James Version says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first, and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen and amen. Bow with me for a word of prayer as we go into this invocation. Father, and you are our Father, a few of your children come now, God, just to hear a word from the Lord. Lord, we thank you for last night's word, but Lord, we thank you for a new, fresh anointing to fall fresh upon us tonight. God, we ask that you crown us with loving kindness from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, if it be your will tonight, we, 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 we thank you for the homecoming but we know that we got parts of our life that needs to be revived, God, that needs to get closer to you. So God, revive in us a new anointing, a fresh anointing. God, revive in us a new heart so we love people better. God, those behind the prison doors, let us love them, as well as those guys on the missionary journey that we will face day to day. God, we ask you also to bless us in a mighty way as we look at who we are, as we're trying to grow in Christ. Now, God, don't turn away from us, but just turn to us and let us be able to face you by repenting and being your children. Now, God, our parents, we ask you to watch over them. Our children getting ready to go to school, watch over them. And God, before we leave this, this word tonight, let it burn our hearts so that we can say, what a mighty God we serve. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before we have prayer tonight from Sister Jessica Wall, we're going to introduce our guest speaker. We're going to have songs, we're going to have that prayer, and then you're gonna have him come. But she has gotten to know um, Reverend Dr. Larry Finch Sr., who is, uh, who was pastor of Antioch Baptist Church. He just retired. I met him three years ago. He allowed me to preach uh, for an afternoon program, and I've been blessed by it. He is a man that's been in this vineyard for a while. He is by trade an aeronautical engineer. He, fly, he was a pilot, uh, but, but bigger than flying for an airline, he's been God's pilot. And we know that he's been doing that um, for a mighty long time. Dr. Finch um, started at Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., and he's been going ever since. He is a man uh, that was ordained February 20th, 1988, and he's been on the journey, pressing his way since that time forward. He's a man of education. He has his doctorate from, again, Andersonville Theological Seminary, uh, where he has that, but he also has uh, 
and his degree in religion from George Washington University. So he is a, a student of the gospel. What I love about him is he's not one to brag about who he is. He just believes in loving people and preaching the word of God. And as we come tonight, we, we know that he is also an author. His first book was titled, What Every Religion Needs to Know About the Godhead. What every religion needs to know about the Godhead. But I know that he, through experience, is a mighty good preacher and teacher. So as he comes tonight, pray with him, pray for him, and we thank God for meeting a man of God's own heart. In Jesus' name, we give him praise. We give God the praise for sending him our way. We give God the honor for allowing him to be a part of this ministry tonight. And we give God the glory as he is doing great things with us and for you. Listen to the songs, listen to the prayer, and listen to the word. Amen, somebody. Me, my angel, say, Savior, hear my arm, cry. While on over thou art calling, do not pass me. I'm calling now, Savior, oh, Savior, why don't you hear my humble cry? Why on all the
want you here in my humble prayer. Wild, wild, wild on the earth there I call to do not cast me by. Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. Shout out to everybody can dance to. The song is totally different than what we had planned because we did not have rehearsal. So we're going to let the Holy, continue, Holy Spirit continue to move its way inside this house of prayer. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Savior Jesus Christ into the First New Hope Baptist Church and to the very fine pastor Stevenson Reed. We thank God for you and we thank God for this opportunity to bring a word before you today. Um, we do want to also encourage you in your 151st anniversary to keep on pushing, pushing in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
we do praise, we magnify, and we glorify God for all of the things that he has done. And again, I want to thank God for this opportunity to come before you, to be able to share a word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, are you praying with me? Are you praying for me? Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Guide our minds, our hearts, and our souls. Articulate my tongue, dear Father, that your words may flow smoothly, that your will may be done, and that your purpose may be accomplished for these thy people. And this we ask in the marvelous yet majestic name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And let every heart, mind, and soul say amen. God bless you once again, church, and we just thank God for you and for his word today. Um, I'll be coming out of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. As we look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 1, we find these words written by Paul, the apostle. Therefore, my brother and dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I want to use as a subject for today's message, godly recommendations to the New Testament church. Godly recommendations to the New Testament church. Now, about AD 61, while Paul was in prison in Rome, he, he wrote to the church of Philippi. He wrote to all of the believers in Christ. It was a godly, it was a godly recommendation to the New Testament church, a godly recommendation that folk may live and that they may grow in the word of God, that they may be growing in the word of the living God and become mature in the word of the living God. Now, the thing about Paul was that Paul had recommended five things to the New Testament church and at Philippi for all believers in Christ to learn and live, to learn, live, and grow. There are five things I want to touch on today. Paul said, I beseech, in other words, Paul urgently and pleaded with these two women to reconcile with one another for the sake of Christ. You know, many times when you have situations in the church among baptized believers in Christ, it is God's will that we reconcile one with another. And when we begin to reconcile, we will begin to grow. The first thing I want to talk about is reconciliation. Reconciliation is very important in the life of a Christian believer. It is very important in, in a Christian relationship in or outside of the church. With the aid and the obedience of the Holy Spirit, we are reconciled one with another. Not only reconciled one with another, but we as Christians have no excuse not to reconcile or be reconciled with one another. We find here in verse one and two, the reconciliation, he says, I beseech you, Ordidius, and beseech Santicius, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. So it's very important that we be of the same mind and same heart set in the Lord. Paul goes on to say, and I entreat thee also true yoke fellows. Now listen, help those women which labor with me in the gospel with Clemens also with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. You see, we need help in this thing. It's not just a one person deal. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to work with us in our mindset of reconciliation. It, it is very important. I don't care if you're right wing, left wing, no wing, we must be obedient to the Holy Spirit. 
And when we are obedient to the Holy Spirit, we are able to reconcile one with another. I'm talking about a godly recommendation to the New Testament church. The second thing I want to talk about is in verse 4. Joy. The thing about joy, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, joy must be cultivated first in the heart. If joy is cultivated first in the heart, then second in the mind, and third in the soul, before the body can be activated to a level of unspeakable joy. I'm talking about a joy that is unspeakable. And before this could happen, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to cultivate the heart, the mind, and the soul in the body. Now listen to what he says in verse 4. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You see, in order for us to grow, not only must we must have reconciliation, but we must also have that joy. And that joy, which is unspeakable. You see, when we are focused on by the outside folk, when they look at us as born again, baptized believers, what do they see? How are we responding to certain situations in our lives? But the joy of the Lord is our strength. If we cannot be reconciled, if we do not have that joy, how in the world when folk or how are we going to win souls for Christ if they see us not reconciling with one another, not having that joy. Now, I'm not talking about happiness. Happiness doesn't always come. Happiness comes sometimes when, 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 when you just want a comb of ice cream. But when that ice cream runs out, then the joy is gone. It's just like B.B. King. The thrill is gone. But we must have that reconciliation. We must have that joy in order to grow evenly as Christians or born again, baptized believers in Christ. Again, a godly recommendation to the new Testament church that we may grow and mature in the word of the living God. The third thing I want to talk about is gentleness. Gentleness, as we see in verse five, as we walk in the world, in this world, as believers in Christ, the world should know and the world should see that Christ lives in you and me. The world, it must see that through our actions, one with another and mankind. In that 25th chapter of Matthew, it goes on to say, somebody may say, well, Lord, how, how did you know that, that, that we have fed the hungry? Or the sick. He says, inasmuch as you've done unto these the least of these, you've done unto these my brethren. See, I can hear you talking. He says, but you know, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. In verse 5, he says, now let your moderations be made known, not to some men, but to all men. Well, why is that, preacher? Because the Lord is at hand. Folk must see the fruit in you and me. Feeding the hungry. We must feed the hungry. We must do those things that are pleasing unto God. If you don't feed someone when they're hungry or you visit them when they're sick, there are certain things that is important to us as baptized believers in Christ. They must see the fruit in you and me. So many folk are so religious today. You know, we need to lose our religion and gain a relationship with Christ. It's so vitally important that they see the actions of a born again, baptized, believing in Christ. If you have not grown in Christ, how can you do the things of Christ? You can't be the same as you were five or six years ago or two months ago. You have to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you and me. The thing about sanctification is, is that sanctification is a progressive work. It works in you and me when we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in our lives. That love, that joy and peace, that long-suffering, gentleness and godliness, that faith, meekness and temperance begin to work in us when we allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in you and me. I don't know about you, but I feel an amen coming on. A godly 
recommendation to the New Testament church that we may grow and be fruitful in the word of the living God. The fourth thing I want to talk about is prayer. The thing about supplication and prayer, in our prayer, prayer life, we should humbly seek God. We should not be prayer missed that, 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 that pray that bad things happen to us. That's, that's not the prayer that God wants to hear. But the prayer, the thing about the prayer is, is that prayer reveals the inner attitude that don't always reflect the outer circumstances. I'm gonna say that again. Prayer reveals an inner attitude that does not always reflect our outward circumstances. Listen to what Paul said. And these are things that are necessary for us to grow in Christ Jesus, to mature as Christians in Christ Jesus. Notice what verse six says. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now listen to verse seven. In the peace, in the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The thing about having that peace, we first must have the peace with God, which deals with our salvation. Then we have the peace of God that deals with our peace of mind. Again, it reveals the inner attitude that doesn't always reflect in outward circumstances. One thing about prayer is that prayer is often times said to be a body healer. Prayer is oftentimes a Holy Ghost promoter. Prayer is a power bringer. Prayer is a victory gainer. Prayer is a joy provider. Prayer is a soul keeper. Prayer is an obstacle remover. Prayer is a grace maker. Prayer is a mercy keeper. Prayer is peace and a peace creator. a godly recommendation to the New Testament church that we may grow. And fifth thing, the fifth thing is, is that we must have a focus before we can really start to grow. We determine our minds. Focus will determine our minds and we determine our mindset. That is how we think how we speak and how we act and are we in sync with the Holy Spirit. How we think, how we speak, how we act. We must be in sync with the Holy Spirit. See, see, see this is just like as we look at the technology today. The Wi-Fi must be in sync with our iPads. The, the Wi-Fi must be in sync with our telephones. The, the Wi-Fi must be in sync with our televisions. Being in sync makes the diff all the difference in the world. And again, Paul says in this recommendation to the New Testament church, we must be focused. Now notice in verse 8, he says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, and if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, I want you to think on these things. And if we're able to think on these things, and if the virtue is working in our hearts, our minds, and our souls, then we can think on those things which are honest. We can think on those things which are just. We can think on those things which are pure. We can think on those things which are lovely. We can think on those things which are of a good report. If the Holy Spirit is working on the inside, if we're in sync with the true and living God, those things, in verse 9, 
those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. When Jesus Christ hung on an old rugged cross, when he hung on that old rugged cross for you and for me, On that third day, he promised that he would rise up again for you and me. But yes, he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. And not only did he share with us the word of reconciliation, the, the word of joy and the word of gentleness and the word of prayer and being focused, we know that his body was a body healer. We know that he was holy and a holiness promoter. We know that he was a joy provider. We know that he was a soul keeper. He know that he was an obstacle remover. And because he was able to share these things, Paul was able to share reconciliation. Paul was able to reconcile joy. Paul was able to share with us godliness and gentleness, but the prayer and the focus of the true and living God. The God we serve gave his only begotten son for you and me. Yes, he paid the price that he did not owe. He prayed the price that we could not pay. There was something about those dynamic stripes on Calvary's cross that we may be healed spiritually, physically, and emotionally. But they put my Lord and my God, your Lord and your God on that old rugged cross. Put him in a borrowed tomb. But something happened dynamically on that third day. On that third day, he got up not with some power, but he got up with all power in his hands. And because he got up with all power in his hands, we can live, we can move, and we can have our being in Christ Jesus today. What a word from the true and living God. You listen, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about it. And when we look at the circumstances around us this day, that peace that surpasses all understanding rests, rule, and abide in our hearts today. So if we're going to grow in Christ, we must first have reconciliation one to another. We must first have that joy that's cultivated on the inside, a joy that is unspeakable. Third, we must have that gentleness that God will work it out in our lives. Then we must have a prayer life, that prayer life that will reveal an inner attitude that does not always reflect in outward circumstances. And then finally, that focus, that focus, so vitally important. With the permission of the pastor, we want to open the doors of the spiritual church. And the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation, but with the mouth confession is made today unto salvation. Harden not your heart. What you believe and what you believe today will determine your eternal destination. Heaven is real and hell is real. So we pray that we will be reconciled to Christ. We pray that those will receive Christ as their personal Savior. And again, I want to thank the pastor, the Reverend Stevenson Reed, for this opportunity. And again, the First New Hope Baptist Church and their 151st anniversary. So praise and we thank God for you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we do thank you now once again for this opportunity. Guide our minds and our hearts and our souls and continue to bless 
to hear us. Continue to grant them what they stand in need of. Continue to bless our nation, for we stand in need of a blessing in the midst of chaos. Continue to bless our world and our nation and all of our communities. Those that are sick and those who are behind prison walls, those who are bereaved, continue to bless and to keep them. And Father in heaven, this we ask in the mighty yet majestic name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the church of the living God say amen. God bless you, church. It's giving and stewardship time at First New Hope Baptist Church. On the behalf of the trustees of First New Hope Baptist Church, if you have a church home, give to that church. If you don't have a church home, we would ask that you give to First New Hope Baptist Church. You can go to our website, www.firstnewhope.com. Click on to the Give button and you will be able to give. If you prefer mailing your offering in, to P.O. Box 356, Spotsylvania, Virginia, 22553. We will record your amount and mail you your receipt. And at the end of the year, if you have given us a certain amount, we will send you a letter for tax purpose. Be blessed and give. Amen. Thank you.